Happy year all. Welcome to Anamed Library Talk. At today's talk, we have distinguished speakers with us. Panagiotis Plos, Eleni Kalimopolo, Christine Filio. Today's talk is entitled Intercommunal Musical Geographies of Late Ottoman Istanbul. Intercommunal Communal Musical Geographies of Late Ottoman Istanbul is a research project that maps and analyzes the fields of intercommunal musical interaction and or exclusion in Late Ottoman Istanbul. It focuses on informal modes of so society, space of public musical performance and the field of music publishing in order to illuminate the collective net networks and individual itineraries within the shifting urban environment of late Ottoman Istanbul that constituted and sustained intercommunal musical relations. This talk will address the methodog methodological and theoretical challenges of the use of space as an analytical tool in the study of urban music in the late Ottoman Istanbul and will present the objectives and main output in turn music G. At this point, I would like to introduce you our speakers. Panagiatis Poulos is assistant professor in ethnomusicology at the Department of Music Studies at the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. His research centers on the musical traditions of Middle East, the cultural history of late Ottoman and Turkish music and arts, and the history of everyday life in Ottoman cities. He is author of Music in the Islamic World, Sources, Perspectives, Practices, and co-editor of Ottoman Intim Intimacies, Balk Balkan Musical Relates, and of Ottoman Monuments in Greece, Heritage Under Negotiation. Panagatis Poulos is the principal investig investigator of the research project Intercommunal Music Geographies of Late Ottoman Istanbul, and scientific director of the research project History, Space and Heritage at the transition from the Ottoman Empire to Greek state. Eleni Kalimopoulou is assistant professor of ethnomusicology at the University of Macedonia. She studied ethnomusicology with an emphasis on the musical cultures of the Near and Middle East. She is author of Parodosiaka, Music, Meaning and Identity in Modern Greece, co-author of Learning Cultural Truths, The Soundscapes, a teacher handbook, and co-editor of the book Introduction in Ethnomusicology. Her research interests center on musical performance and ethnography, public folklore, and the politics of culture, nation nationalism, religion and ritual, auditory culture and urban space, and epistemology and methodology of research. As a founding member of the research team Sonar Cities, Kalimopulo convened the research project Learning Culture Through City Soundscapes founded by the John S. Lattice Public Benefit Foundation. She is presently a member of the International, International Advi Ad Advisory Board of Ethnomusicology Forum. Christine Filio, professor in the Department of History at the University of California, Berkeley, and director of the Modern Greek Hellenic Studies and Turkish, Ottoman, and Post-Ottoman Studies program, programs there, specializing the connected histories of the Balkan and Middle East since the 17th century, focusing particularly on the emergence of the Greek and Turkish nation-states out of the Ottoman Empire in the 19th and 20th centuries. centuries. She has worked and is interested more broadly in comparative empires and in interfaces between cultures and histories in Europe and the Middle East. Her books, Biography of an Empire, Governing Ottomans in an Age of Revolution and Turkey, and a Turkey, a Past Against History, have been translated into both Greek and Turkish, and she has published widely in scholarly journals as well as in broad broader forms such as public books and Jadalia. Dear attendees, please bear in mind that your video and audios are closed. Please type your questions in the chat section. Uh, your questions will be answered in Q&A session. Now I'm passing the word to Kristen Filio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Irem. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Uh, I 
I'm happy to be moderating this um, this event and this discussion. I think this uh, project is very unique in the context of Ottoman studies and Ottoman digital projects in that it not only um, includes non-Muslims, but includes them in looking at the question of intercommunality. So looking at the bigger picture, and it's one of the few studies about music in Ottoman society that we have. So um, it's very exciting and I look forward to hearing um, from the researchers and from the, the audience today. So without further ado, I pass the floor on to Panayotis Poulos. Welcome. Thank you very much, Christine. Uh, I, I would first like to thank uh, Tigdem Yildirim, head librarian of um, uh, Anamed uh, Library, uh, Coach University, for, and for uh, her kind invitation to participate in this uh, very uh, interesting forum, the, the, the Anamed Library uh, talks. Uh, I would like to thank particularly Irene Minal for organizing and setting up uh, the whole event today. And uh, I would like to th thank also uh, all participants, which unfortunately we cannot see and interact also in a more visual manner. But uh, I believe with the questions and uh, the discussion, we'll have the chance to talk uh, a bit more about uh, uh, what we've been presenting today. Um, I will uh, share, start by sharing my uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. Right. So, firstly, I just give a very brief uh, introduction about the uh, the identity of the the project, uh, institutional identity. This is a research project started in nineteen uh, twenty nineteen and finished in June twenty twenty two. Uh, it's a project that was uh, hosted uh, at the Ethnomusicology and Cultural Anthropology Laboratory of the Music Department of the National Capodistrian University of Athens, in Athens, Greece. And uh, it was a project, it's a project that has been funded by the Hellenic Foundation of uh, Research for Research and Innovation. Uh, they, they, the core team uh, constituted of uh, uh, eight members, eight researchers, uh, more senior and more younger, and uh, two fellows and one advisor. I'll come back uh, to them at the end of the talk and uh, uh, refer to the team more specifically. Uh, the concept of uh, intercommunality is uh, central at the title of our project, and I should start by explaining its prominence. According to historian uh, Nicolas Dumanis, I quote, intercommunality refers to the accommodation of difference between cultural, ethnic, or religious communities that happen to occupy the same street, neighborhood, village, or rural, uh, rural uh, environment, end of quote. Therefore, the term refers to the mode of coexistence between different communities, and the use of the term gives pride of place to the notion of community which uh, is a fundamental component of Ottoman society. As it will become clear in the course of this presentation, apart from the identification of the notion of community with the recognized religious communities of the Ottoman Empire, Muslim, Jews, Christians, whether Orthodox, Armenian or Catholic, the project uses the term community in a broader sense to describe a fundamental type of social formation central in the music making and in the musical life of the Ottoman Istanbul in general. To demonstrate the importance of choosing intercommunality at the, at the central uh, analytical uh, notion of intermusic, I should turn to the field of historiography of Ottoman slash Turkish music and the recent developments in it. We have certainly uh, currently moved forward from a narrative of the history of Ottoman Turkish music guided uh, by a nationalist ideological agenda of the early and mid 20th century. By that I refer to uh, uh, two narratives like, for instance, that produced by very significant musicologists like Ralph Yektabri and others, that promoted an image of the musical tradition being almost exclusively a privileged field of Ottoman Turks, and in which the non-Muslim element 
existed only independently, disconnected from the major processes uh, of the development of music. The emergence, possibly in the 1940s, of the category of the minority musician, as in Luc Musician Lair or Musik Gilel, of Ottoman music, uh, in modern text music historiography, reflected the massive social and political transformations of the 20th century. This evidently post Treaty of Lausanne categorization, recognized and documented aspects of the music history of the various ethno religious uh, communities of the Ottoman Empire. However, at the same time, it imposed a very compartmentalized conception uh, of, on the music history of Ottoman Istanbul. Uh, interestingly, this view was not restricted to text historiography, but it has been adopted also in other national contexts, like for instance, later on in Greece, when there is a, a, a big interest and discovery of the room composers of Istanbul, somehow discussed kind of independently from the broader picture, which includes, of course, other communities and, of course, the, uh, the, the, the state, uh, the dominance of the state uh, Ottoman framework. The segre this segregated approach of, Ottoman, uh, of the Ottoman community music creators of Istanbul was succeeded by an uncritical and romantic approach uh, to the idea of coexistence and uh, that was largely influenced by nostalgia for the past. A structural feeling that developed and expanded in the Turkish public sphere in the 1990s and uh, 2000s. This celebration of Istanbul's diverse multi-ethnic musical past reached its heyday in, uh, I think, in my view, in 2010, uh, in the context of the institution of European uh, cultural capital. Uh, in his introduction of the collective volume entitled Writing the History of Ottoman Music, Martin Grev underlined the challenges of the inclusion of the non-Turkish elements while approaching Ottoman music, as well as the need for perceiving the term Ottoman music as an open field for discussion. Already in, the, in 2016, when the book was published, there had been path-breaking developments in the research of Ottoman music history, including the publication and study of an array of important unknown historical sources. All uh, of these are summed up by uh, Ingrid's uh, introduction. In addition, scholarship, both local and international, had reapproached and reevaluated the significance of uh, the significance and impact of already known historical figures and their work like the cultural broker Aliufki and the multifaceted intellectual prince Dimitrius Kantemir. Since 2016, even more innovative and informative contributions have been made in the field. To name just a few, is the completion of the critical edition of Aliufki's Paris manuscript by Judith Haig, the gradual output of the productive research project CMO, working on the 19th century Armenian musical manuscript, the wealth of archival administrative sources on uh, music policies of the Ottoman court and its music life in the 19th century by Hikmet Toker, and the recent critical edition of the Greek music collection of Therapy by Mehmet Ali Sanlukov. In addition to new sources, one should consider the emergence of uh, critical scholars in that question, the certainties that the field inherited by modernist historiography, such as the top-down scheme of modernization of music, the unconditional acceptance of uh, westernization and the attempts to periodize the history of Ottoman music after that of Western classical music. Here, I mean, there are plenty of uh, colleagues, I should uh, indicate to mention Jacob Bolle and Ayas. Given the prolific current state of the field of Ottoman Turkish music research, which I tried to describe in my brief overview, I believe we are in a mature state to rethink and situate intercommunality within the Ottoman Turkish music historiography. By doing so, we should explore its potential to broaden our understanding of Ottoman musical culture. This is also the main objective of uh, intermusic research project in approaching the Ottoman 19th century. Employing intercommunality in the study of music modernization has revealed the level of uh, interaction uh, and competition between the musical reforms uh, of the Greek Orthodox and the Armenian communities in the early 20th century and those implemented by the Ottoman court. Consequently, intercommunality can be observed in the development of music printing in Istanbul, where Greek musical collections and the printing printed songtext collections, the Mejmoas, 
like that by Hashim Bey, for the certain respects, a unified genealogy. We tend to think of them as two separate uh, categories of publications, but that, in my opinion, they're not. Examining these collections as a corpus and looking closely at the decisions in the selections of compositions, composers, modes of presentation, theoretical framing, uh, made their editors, that the editors made, allow us to detect the various levels of intercommunal interaction and contact, like in education or performance, that was taking place on the background. Apart from the musical level that involves training and transmission, the musical repertoire and knowledge, there's a very important aspect that operated on a communal basis, and that is economy. Intercommunal economies can be seen in the fields of music, music publishing, of entertainment and music sociality, and in music performance in general. These economies were in certain case, cases more niche, like in the case of a significant number of Greek music books that were printed in Jewish and Armenian publishing houses, but also more large scale, uh, like in the case of music entertainment, where a significant portion of businesses were music was performed when in the hands of non-Muslim subjects. These are only a few illustrative examples that constitute the primary subject of written music and which we try to map and analyze. We define these uh, cases of intercommunal interaction as understated intermediary spaces of music making and intercommunal uh, interaction. So this brings me to the issue of space, geography and cartography. Space as a research topic or an analytical category has not been considerably favored by historical studies of Ottoman music. It is really, in my understanding, the work by Jem Behar, who gave prominence to this notion when discussing issue of musical transmission and performance context in relation to ideology and musical aesthetics. Yet the evocation of space and of place as analytical tools should be credited to research on Turkey's popular music, and in particular uh, to the work uh, by uh, Martin Stokes on Arabesque and on various vocal forms of Turkish art music. Stokes' work, like that of other music scholars who critically examine the relationship between space and music, foregrounded the dual capacity of music on the one hand to participate in the production, delimination and regulation of social space, and on the other hand, in challenging and dismantling the spatial hierarchies. Intermusic endorses this approach to the relation between music and space and applies it to the historical inquiry of intercommunal musical uh, relations in later Ottoman standards. In this respect, music in its various manifestations produces the above mentioned understated intermediary spaces. It set their boundaries and regulated the social interactions that took place within them. At the same time, music practices of the later Roman era challenged spatial uh, order hierarchies and reconstituted them. Music in this respect is bound to an array of exterior spatialities which in uh, Georgina Bohr's terms are, I quote, configured by the physical and technological and or social dimensions of the performance event or sound work, end of quote. This uh, interrela interrelationship is dynamic, uh, which consequently means that space affects and is affected by the musicians, not the musical performances. Again, as Bourne observes regarding the relation between space and the creative process in music, I quote, space is both produced and transformed. Uh, an illustrative example to move us now closer to the output of this project uh, is to look at uh, various the phenomenon of lessons uh, of Macam repertoire taking place in Christian churches in uh, various parishes of uh, Istanbul in uh, the 19th century and uh, I would like now to uh, open uh, uh, one of our uh, 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 deliverables of our project, which we'll come back to it later also in the presentation, which is here, just quickly, sorry. Yes. Uh, I hope you are able to 
to see it, right? So here, uh, this is a, a repository of the data of the project and what actually I have made a, 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 an inquiry and we're looking at various um, uh, lessons of Makam music taking places in, cherries, in churches in Istanbul. So lessons in uh, Halkidona School of uh, Church Music, uh, musical lessons in Hagia Kiriaki Church at, uh, in the Kumkap, uh, in Uskudar at the Surp Karabet Church, uh, then in Surp Stefan Church in uh, Pera, etc. So basically, here emerges a geography of new spaces for the communal musical transmission in Leyton of Istanbul, which operated in parallel to other educational structures uh, of that time and which constitutes part of the Broadway network of music making in the city. I hope it was a you were able to look at the pointing uh, on the map on the, on the right side. Okay. By employing this model of inquiry on the relation between music and space, intermusic explores the role of space both as a physical and as an imaginary component of uh, Istanbul's musical history in shaping and sustaining the above mentioned cultural, uh, 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 cultural pluralism. Musical publications such as the printed uh, musical collections mentioned earlier, and about which Eleni will uh, talk to us, uh, Eleni Kalimopoulou will talk to us uh, in, a, in, a, in, a little, in a while. Together with other media covering musical discourse, press, literature should be considered as fundamental elements of space production to the extent that they document and imaginatively reproduce and recollect musical repertoires, musical subjects and intercommunal musical experience. Printing and its products conceive as a system of representation, I quote, is a specialization of sorts which automatically freezes the flow of experience and in so doing distorts what it strives to represent, as David Harvey observes. Aside, aside from the field of geography, the spatial dimension of printing has been extensively discussed and debated in the field of contemporary critical theory. In the context of spatial analysis and the advancement of printing, a feature placed at the center of modernity, is instrumental in the inquiry of the representational aspects of the production of space. And uh, by that, I come to last uh, section of my uh, introductory uh, uh, part in this presentation, which is cartography. You got a very uh, brief uh, sense of uh, uh, the way we'll be managing uh, data uh, uh, through the examples I, I demonstrated. We started by employing a conventional digital cartographic uh, method, being aware of the shortcomings and the limitation in contextualizing musical performance and sound. Uh, here I refer to a lot of uh, literature, recent literature by Uzunian and others on the uh, criticism on cartographic methods. We did this uh, through the we did this through the integration of mapping application in our data repository of intermusic, where one can look at static representation of actors, so musicians, patrons, and other people involved in this network, events like the events I just mentioned, which are, which are the music lessons taking place in the church and objects, which by that were actually uh, included music publications and their content. Uh, through the creative use of multimedia sources like text and sound records, we tried to subvert the greediness of uh, conventional cartography. So I move to the next example, and I just want to make sure that you can all see the change in the, in the page, right? So this is an entry of an object, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, it's uh, an entry in uh, the repository of the, of the song Isteris and Gel Gidelim uh, by the celebrated court singer and music publisher Hashim Bey. This song is an example of a shift in the understanding of space in 19th century Ottoman song tradition. Uh, songs like this one demonstrated the transition from the generic idealized space of the garden, the Bakhtse, the Yudistan, to the evocation of real places uh, of the city uh, in their song texts. So in this example it is Fener, 
that um, uh, is being uh, uh, it's being mentioned as is, is the scenario where the singer proposes to his lover as the place in order to go and leave their love affair. Isteris en gelgi delin, fener de bi zefke delin, zefkinse ba deichelin. So uh, come if you want, let's go, let's have fun at fener. Uh, if you feel joyful, let's drink uh, wine. And uh, uh, here there is an option to actually listen to. Uh, oh, is there, is So this is an example of how, how songs through language and sound uh, construct new representations of Istanbul's urban space by adding a sound recording in the, of the song the repository alongside to the mapping of other information about the song and the, the, the composer and everything, we attempt to conflate uh, what Peter McMurray described as different photographic methods mapping of, about, and with uh, sound. Before I uh, invite Eleni Kalimopoulou to present us some more examples of the mapping activity of the project, I, I will quickly demonstrate that in entries like this one, uh, apart from you know being able to uh, access a recording, sometimes also the score, uh, you, one can look at the at the at the, um, uh, the the major actors like here the composer and then follow actually the individuals um, uh, itineraries in Istanbul starting with the birthplace and then moving to home address in Uskudar and then various work um, addresses so you can get a sense of the individual. Uh, itineraries uh, of uh, a certain a musician. So, Eleni, would you like to take over? Perhaps Christine would like to, or? Oh, oh, I'd love to hear you, <laughs> please. Thank okay, you, so thank you very much. Thank you to the Anamet Library for hosting us today. It's very, uh, it's a great honor to be here. Actually, I will start by sharing my uh, PowerPoint so that uh, this is all ready. Mm. Okay. So, yes, can everyone see the, the PowerPoint? Yes, okay. So, um, one of our research focuses for the Intermusic program was on music publishing domain as it emerged in the early 19th century and throughout the 19th century. Um, and our aim in uh, focusing on the music publishing domain was 
uh, to interrogate music publishing as a potential field of intercommunal musical activity, one that can enrich the socio-spatial analysis of late Ottoman music, uh, the analysis as described by Panagiotis Poulos uh, earlier on. So the questions we asked was how intercommunal relations manifested in the music publishing domain, a field where competing modernities were articulated, and how this linked to modes of sociality in various venues of public performance and entertainment in uh, 19th century Istanbul. And indeed, through our focus on music publishing, we were able to find patterns of interaction that entailed both selective copying and borrowing of material, but also significant points of diversion in a broader context of social rivalry, as this was outlined by Panos uh, earlier on. We were also able to place the history of 19th century Ottoman music performance in a broader and quite markedly intercommunal music print publishing network, one that formed in 19th century Istanbul, which linked the musical environment of Turkish musicians with that of the musicians of the Greek Orthodox, the Armenian and the Jewish communities. So why study print printed music collections? Because we uh, approach them as cultural and material artifacts that can articulate and also engender emerging socialities, communal relations and intercommunal relations, performative worlds and spaces. So a cultural history of printed music collections, a study of their makings, of their multiple readings, of their usages, can help us understand intercommunal relations and music socialities in late Ottoman Istanbul. So coming to, uh, sorry, oops, let me go. Okay, so coming to uh, the four collections that uh, we focused on, perhaps a few words on the Greek printed music collections in general. If you uh, enter the website and go to thematic mapping, this is uh, where I draw the example from. Um, so we studied the Greek printed music collections, which are collections that contain Ottoman art music and compared to their contemporaneous Turkish collections and to an extent also to the earlier Mejmoas, um, they have some significant resemblances. So in terms of the subject matter, so there is Ottoman art music, mainly vocal pieces uh, by both Muslim and non-Muslim composers. And in terms of the internal organization of the music repertoire, so it's ordered by Makam uh, uh, and then by song genre, by song form. But there were also important differences. So uh, the Greek printed music collections also contain Greek repertoire, the so-called Romeica Tragudia. Um, and they also contain music notations, which the Turkish uh, collections do not, and especially Byzantine notation. And also the language is in Greek and or in Karamanlidika. So they are written in Turkish using the Greek alphabet. So out of the study of these collections, there emerges a picture of a syncretic genre in terms of both the linguistic, the textual, and the musical characteristics. So coming to the particular uh, collections that we studied, you can see this here. Uh, we selected four such collections for study. And here you can see the names. Uh, these were chosen out of a number of other collections because these ones in particular contain a substantial number of Ottoman pieces because they span a period of four decades, starting from 1830, when Efterpi, the first Greek printed music collection was printed and ending in the early 1870s. And also importantly, because these uh, collections lent themselves to important comparisons with two more Ottoman Turkish song text collections. The Mejmuai by Hashim Bey, which was published in two editions in 1853 and 1864. So this is the first major printed collection in Ottoman Turkish, and uh, it contains only the song's lyrics without music notation, as was uh, usual in the tradition of the Mejmoa. So one of the things that we studied uh, related with these uh, collections was their subscribers. <clears throat> 
Let me say a few words about the subscribers. So these particular collections were published with a method of pre-subscription. Um, printed collections of secular music were learned books. They targeted a specialized readership due to the inclusion of music notation, which also rendered them expensive to produce. And unlike commercial books, they were largely dependent on pre-subscriptions for their viability, and their price was also fairly high. So subscribers would sometimes pay in advance and sometimes they would pay upon reception of the book. Um, it was usual in these uh, collections also to include at the end of the book, a catalog with the subscribers, such as the one you can see here. And of course, uh, the question arises, what can we learn uh, from the subscribers catalogs and how their study is instructive? So one can gain important information about the geographical distribution of and the social lives of the printed music collections, about the boundaries and interpenetration between contiguous musical communities. And of course, one can learn about the reader's social and professional profile and consuming habits. Uh, Mary Carroll actually has done some work uh, already uh, in this area in her, uh, in her book. So who buys them? What is their profile? Uh, what is their background? Where are they sold? To what purposes are they put? How are they used? And so on and so forth. To give a, a, an example, out of a preliminary comparative examination of the subscribers' catalogs of Efterpi and another uh, collection, Anastasimatarion Neon, which is a major collection of ecclesiastical hymns which was published only two years later than FTRP by the same team of people. So a study of their uh, subscribers of the two catalogs reveals that there is no simple correspondence between them. So it is very interesting that the readership of Greek collections of ecclesiastical music uh, and of secular music, such, such as the ones that we studied, uh, uh, appears to be uh, quite different. So the catalogs are usually ordered uh, in terms of their internal organization as a general rule uh, by the names of the subscribers, which are uh, under place. So place is uh, the main category. And under each place category, there is the social title and sometimes the professional occupation with subscribers from the clergy ranks coming first and then the lay persons following and uh, some subscribers names also give clues about the person's place of origin and or residence. Um, one of the work, uh, the works we did uh, as relates to the music collections and to the subscribers catalogs in particular was uh, to map the geographical distribution of these four uh, collections. So here you can see uh, the distribution, the places which are listed in the subscribers catalog uh, of the four printed collections, starting with Terpi, uh, which is the one on the top left, then going to Pandora, then going to Cavelis, 1856, uh, Muscona Panthisma, and the second edition of Cavelis, 1873. Uh, so on the whole, uh, Perhaps I can show it here. No, a substantial portion of the copies are sold in Istanbul, as one can see, while the geographical distribution appears to widen in the later uh, collections, an indication of the gradual growth of the secular music book printing networks. It is also noteworthy that while the same regions are overall covered, so contemporary Greece, Turkey, and the Southeastern Balkans, different cities or towns appear in the subscribers catalog of each collection. Here you can see a synthetic map uh, with all the places of all the four uh, collections. And this may point to the existence of separate or evolving networks of distribution depending on the printing press. Finally, what is more, the Greek kingdom and the Greek diasporic communities in Western Europe are markedly underrepresented in the subscribers' geography. This might suggest that despite the inherently transnational workings of typography, the collections reflect a localized situation in Istanbul more closely tied to the ideological history of the Ottoman Greek community rather than the Greek kingdom. Um, perhaps one final note. Uh, so this is a, a work in progress as uh, 
Panagiotis Poulos will also uh, perhaps remark. And uh, I think uh, at least uh, this presentation um, makes it very clear that if one builds up on this sort of research and one is able to accumulate more data on uh, the various publications of the 19th century in terms of uh, the music, then perhaps this can lead us to very, very interesting uh, conclusions. <clears throat> right. Thank so, you so much. And back to Panayotis. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eleni. Thank you, Christine. So I just uh, um, would like now to uh, quickly go through um, I just, I mean, we've got, I think we gave you through the various examples, um, the uh, sense of the, where, where the topics, but also the material. And I want to, uh, you know, uh, spend a bit more time uh, looking at the, uh, well, the deliverables, you can actually visit the site and see that, you know, part of what we've done is like this database, which is a, a music and song text inventory of the collections you've seen. There's a digital repository with comparative material that actually uh, they, they comes out of the collections, but also from other uh, sources I'm, I'm going to talk in a quick in a while. Uh, there are web mapping applications like those integrated in the repository, but also other thematic ones like the one that uh, Eleni just presented. There were music recordings. I forgot to uh, mention that we listened to Nico Sandrico singing one of our uh, collaborators uh, singing a Beatles song. So there were, there were specific recordings made out of the material. And then there was another conference, international conference. Now sources, uh, obviously the printed collections, we talk about that. There's the Ottoman uh, Greek press. Uh, there is uh, published comparative material from different um, uh, communities and studies. I've already mentioned some of them, but we gave a lot of weight actually to the Ottoman and Turkish archival documents, uh, which are actually of various type. We were looking at, uh, on the one hand, administrative documents of the Ottoman state that have to do with uh, musicians uh, and uh, other uh, aspects of uh, music sociality, but uh, and then combine them and contrast them uh, with uh, communal uh, community archives from the Greek uh, community primarily, but not exclusively. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go through uh, and show you, well, standard kind of sources about uh, pay payrolls of musicians at the court, where we can see uh, intercommunal sort of uh, mixed, mixed, cultural mixed, ethno-religiously mixed, um, uh, uh, mixed uh, uh, orchestras. This is an example of uh, a register from the from the Greek communities, this is part of the material of the community that has been digitized and is hosted in Anthemion uh, Digital Repository at the University of Athens. And it's, there's plenty of material about the uh, musicians, the, uh, the, um, uh, and not only uh, of uh, the, the, the way the communities were organized and other aspects as well. Uh, other administrative documents like uh, tax registers where we can actually observe the situation with the uh, nightclubs in certain areas, etc. Uh, the, we already talked about the, um, uh, the, publica the publications and there's a further step which I want to uh, include here, which is the actual uh, transcription of the content, of the, the musical content. I mean, apart from what Eleni has been talking about, the, uh, uh, about the subscribers. So, so far we uh, produced a number of critical transcriptions of one, uh, one of these collections. And this one is Musico Apanthisma, uh, uh, which uh, you've done, just listen about it. So uh, this includes 174 transcriptions. This will be gradually uploaded at the repository we've just shown you. So one can always, can, will be able to access that material. And in cases of songs, these are coupled by a critical edition of the texts. Text can be in Karamanlitic, as Eleni said. So this is an example of a Sharki by Stavraki Hanende. So we develop a methodology uh, comparatively to other projects uh, and we um, 
uh, publish, uh, uh, making also comments, you know, uh, critical comments about the editions, and this will be gradually uploaded at the uh, webs at the repository. I should uh, here uh, briefly mention that. Uh, this was a two and a half years project so far. I mean, the, it's a kind of a structure which is open to accumulate and integrate more material. So certain aspects might be underdeveloped, but what we've managed to do is to, to have the actual structure uh, to, um, uh, to, to uh, in order to develop it. So in the future, uh, we are aiming to uh, do further work uh, at the laboratory. I think Eleni, would you like to? Yes, uh, yeah. let me again share. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing so yes. that, okay. Uh, share screen, okay. Oh, no, sorry, I need to share the sound as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, so coming to one of the okay, so coming to the field of uh, um, future impact applications, um, our research project was uh, mainly history oriented, but uh, dissemination is also very important for us. So we have been concerned not just. Uh, uh, to communicate our findings, but also to create uh, a repository with data that can be further used and enriched and find new research and artistic applications and um, spawn creative musical responses uh, that have to do with revisiting the past. So this is also uh, in this way a public face humanities project. And well, what we have done in this field in the context of the project is we have outlined four key sectors that are related with culture. Uh, these are uh, cultural preservation and management, cultural tourism, education, and the creative industries. And we have reached out to stakeholders from these uh, four main fields in order to uh, communicate uh, our work and uh, look for ways in which this can uh, sort of create afterlives uh, uh, in these various areas. And um, perhaps I should share one uh, example with, uh, which has to do with the creative industries and the music industry. So what we did was we developed a scenario of how uh, the musical data, which is uploaded on our digital repository, can be used by musicians in creative ways. Um, so to go through this example, which is, uh, however, uh, as can be understood, only an example. So. Uh, also different scenarios can obviously be developed, but if, for example, one wanted to produce a CD, um, which would draw on intermusic outputs and would uh, focus on Armenian composers in 19th century music, one might uh, start by going to the intermusic website and from there to our uh, digital repository. And then if one would, uh, one can type uh, name of songs, name of composers, um, makams, and then uh, if, for instance, uh, one types Nikogos, some 28 entries of Nikogos Agas's um, compositions will turn up. And then if one were to choose one of these compositions, such as A. Gonja, uh, then uh, they would come I have actually saved the tabs because sometimes the internet does not work. They would come here where one would find uh, important information on uh, the particular piece, where it is found, the title, the makam, um, usul form, and so on and so forth. And then one could also uh, search for information on the composer and here on uh, the actors uh, tab. So events, actors, objects, Panagiotis has already spoken about this. One would find the biographical data of Nico Gos, where he works, uh, professions, roles, uh, address, and so on and so forth. And then um, one could also uh, look for information in order to write the liner notes of the CD. So this would take them to, sorry, uh, 
the deliverables, and here they would find the annotated bibliography, which uh, if they opened, they would find information on the history, the music, and the literature of 19th century uh, Istanbul, which would uh, give a lot of context on the musical life of Nico Gos. And then uh, going back to the piece, one could look for the uh, notation of the piece, which uh, unfortunately is not currently available. And then they could also, in some cases, listen to recordings of this piece by the team, which would also uh, add clues uh, related with historical informed performance of these uh, pieces. And what we actually hope is that if musicians, uh, among others, researchers and so on, are to take up this material, then uh, their own work can possibly feed back into our project and so uh, enrich it and uh, contribute to this uh, open, open-ended, uh, in-progress project. Great. Panos, did you have yes, I got another? The final note, probably I think we can actually okay. start moving towards the yeah. uh, more interactive part, which is the questions and the discussion. So, what? Uh, uh, does the spatial approach to music and the communality contribute to the history of uh, music of late Ottoman Istanbul? If I can sum up briefly, the underpinning theme in defining those understated intermediary spaces and tracing the dynamic trajectory through the history of the city has been the quest for voicing diverse elements that compose them. This task, task has shown that the internal stratification of communities was often quite more multifaceted than previously thought, and that the subsequent layers are not always easily traceable. As demonstrated, the eternal diversity of community was based both on the cultural and the social background of, of its members. Moreover, the makeup of its community and its musicians was constantly renewed through migration. And this is an important element that ties us with the history of urban history of, of, of Istanbul, uh, a broader subject. Consequently, challenges, uh, challenges the question need to be addressed with regard to the diversity expressed due to migration. Special approach to music and the community foregrounded new forms of sociality that emerged in the 19th century. And this has given us a different understanding of uh, the, the, the geography, the musical geography, the new geography of the city. Uh, so an interesting example is looking at how th thriving the Golden Hall, and particularly uh, the areas around Hashbi has been in entertainment, which is something that is not really represented, given the, the more sort of emphasis given to other areas like Beirut. So there is a, 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 a kind of a, a re-mapping of uh, certain uh, activities related to music that um, we can actually um, uh, approach through this uh, this way of uh, this uh, world of inquiry. Overall, the, the emphasis on the space and nice of music sociality contributed in a decentralized view of music modernization modernizing process by shifting the spatial focus of analysis and, the, and by acknowledging the local agents and processes that have been operating as part of urban networks of the 19th century. We listen a lot about the different uh, actors and agents. In addition, it foregrounds the capacity of music in its diverse manifestations to challenge spatial hierarchies. This complex intercommunal network presented in, by intermusic um, points the potential in extending this notion of uh, local generated modernity as articulated by Abuel Hatz for a different era, but extending the 19th century and think more about uh, you know, how the local agents are actually implicated and involved in, uh, in Ottoman musical modernity. So, uh, I just before I um, uh, close the presentation, I would, say, I would like to thank, first of all, uh, our institutions, uh, the uh, National Competition University of Athens, the uh, Ethnomusicology and Cultural um, Anthropology Laboratory of the Music Department, and then uh, my precious collaborators, uh, the eight members of uh, the research team, you can, I, I won't go into reading the names, but you can visit the website and look 
cl closely at uh, all the team. They were all contributed very uh, genuinely and uh, very um, in an original manner in various aspects of the things you've seen today. Uh, we had two uh, fellows, uh, uh, and one of them already introduced, Nico Sandrikos, an uh, excellent colleague and uh, musician uh, who participated in the recordings. And uh, last but not least, I would like to thank uh, our uh, academic advisor, Walter Zeff Feldman, who has been uh, with, with us at the, before actually getting the grant to do this research project. He has been very supportive in the whole idea and he's been very much involved in discussions. I would like to thank Christine Filiou for uh, moderating uh, today's presentation, but also for um, uh, sharing her feedback to the project in later stages uh, and uh, I would like to thank her for that. A lot of institutions in Turkey and uh, Greece and uh, of course our colleagues and friends with various ways have been uh, giving us feedback. So that's from uh, me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So moving on to the next section. Um, I while we wait for questions in the chat, I have several questions that I can that I would love to ask both of you. Um, those of us who are engaged in digital projects currently are probably wondering uh, if you could tell us more about the process that went into this in terms of how did you how did you get all of this information? Was it did you, just is it about generating a whole list of sources and then going and reading the sources and entering the information? How did you go about finding the corpus of sources that you use to create this repository? So that's one set of questions. Um, now, for Eleni, especially about the um, music publishing, it was really fascinating. And I wondered, um, just as someone not in this field, what did people do? Like, let's say the subscribers, you showed us lists of subscribers, which is amazing. Um, what did people do with these collections? Was it, would they buy them and just keep them in their library? Would they perform the music? Would they discuss it with each other? Would they then compose music based on what they feel like? How, what, what place did these collections have in the kind of musical lives and the intercommunality um, of these these communities, um, was there music theory? Was it about you know using these collections to discuss something about the music? Um, and I wondered, these the population that would be subscribing to these published collections. Have you been able to tell if they are, is it the same population? Is it a completely different population? Is it an overlapping population from the kind of the Ottoman musicians we see in the in the um, kind of biographical entries of like Tanburi, so-and-so, Nezet, like is that a separate world of the kind of Ottoman court um, musicians versus the people who are reading these, I guess, Greek language, often Greek language music collections um, that are published? And um, I guess this might be, <laughs> it might be a lot to ask because you've done so much work putting the information in and creating the repository, but I'm wondering if you can comment on any patterns that you have found about intercommunality and specifically, do you find, um, do you find a differentiation of musical communities um, a long, like as time goes on in the 19th century, do you see a change that mirrors the political change at all? Do you find like a differentiation of musical communities along ethnic or political or religious lines? Or do you think that, do you feel like the patterns that you've uncovered of intercommunality are telling a different story from the political story that we know? Um, may, in other words, is this intercommunality that you're tracing remaining constant? Or, you know, if not, how is it changing over the course of the 19th century? So those are my initial questions. That <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Feel free to pick and choose whichever ones you want to answer. But yeah, I have more <laughs> when you're, and I, I'm sure I'll have more in response to your answers. So please. 
Thank you very much. Eleni, would you like Pardon? to start? Okay, yes. Okay, <laughs> because I will forget uh, the questions. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Christine. These are all very interesting uh, questions that you are posing. Um, in terms of uh, the usages to which these collections are put, this is a very, actually, this is the most um, uh, intriguing question of all uh, in the context of our project. And um, mm -hmm. It did concern us well, um, so because we did try to trace the sort of lives they have uh, these collections, and uh, what is important perhaps to to note is that um, we were able to connect these uh, collections uh, to the to the previous to the previous uh, period. So we were able to uh, to learn things about the people who published them and how they acquired the repertoire. And there, there, there are actually some uh, uh, texts, uh, some publications, and some notes uh, in the prologues and so on that um, point to uh, the publishers sometimes having uh, acquired, describing the method of acquisition of the repertoire. And it is interesting that some of these uh, speak about MESHK, so uh, the oral transmission of the repertoire uh, from uh, a teacher to a, to a student. And uh, as concerns the afterlives of the collections, um, it is interesting that we were able to find uh, information about uh, the performance of the books. So there are some ads that are published either in the books or in the press uh, in which the publishers uh, offer to, to teach the same Ottoman art music and specifically Efterpi or Pandora or uh, Muscona Panthisma to teach it to this uh, readership of aficionados. We don't know much about them, but they, we, we do know that some of them will actually then meet in specific places, like some of the places that Panos uh, showed, and they would be uh, taught this repertoire. And um, it is interesting how this repertoire then is connected with the chanting milieu, uh, because these are chanters, and um, and so on and so forth. So there is some uh, music sociality which is uh, developed around these books. That's why we spoke about uh, the books uh, sort of articulating, but also uh, engendering uh, music spaces. Mm -hmm. So I think I've answered this uh, first question and maybe uh, a few uh, things about the second question. And then uh, maybe Panagiotis will also uh, uh, answer on this uh, um, concerning the intercommunality and how this changes over time. Uh, I can only uh, comment on how this happens in terms of the music collections, but Amy Panos then can offer a more a broader comment. Uh, in terms of these specific four collections, there is actually a change uh, which is quite marked because um, we can see this in the way that the, the books are introduced by the writers. There, and the last collection by uh, Kay Velis in 19, uh, in, uh, sorry, in the 1870s uh, introduces a new type of introduction where there is a very uh, clear national rhetoric. So there is a reference to this uh, repertoire, which is being compared to Greek music in general. There is a tendency for historicity. There is a tendency to sort of uh, put in a hierarchical position the Ottoman art music repertoire in relation to Byzantine music and so on and so forth. So we can understand that intercommunality, the qualities of intercommunality are starting to change in the second half of the, um, of the 19th century. But maybe Panagiotis would like to uh, add something on this. Sure. Uh, yes, I think that's an interesting example of you. Uh, what what you just uh, um, uh, what you just um, said, uh, which kinds of ties with the question about whether how how stable is intercultural how how dynamic it is as a concept, which obviously we think it, it is, and that's the idea we're trying to move away from a more sort of kind of idealized view of intercommunality uh, where everything you know works in a coexisting manner uh, so it's quite interesting that you know the first like the first prologue the first edition the editor praises the ottoman musicians of the of the court 
from whom actually he acquired the knowledge of this music, which is very difficult and, you know, all the mastery that, you know, monthly musicians have. And then a few years, I mean, in the second edition, there's a shift of the uh, agenda in the ideological sense that Eleni discussed, which is very interesting. I mean, suddenly it is the Greek ancient music this is, that uh, matters. So this also can be read as a shift in the politics the ideological politics of the of the of the of the musicians and consequently of the communities and consequently of you know issues like Ottomanism versus uh, Greek Ottomanism versus uh, you know other options that the Ottoman subjects had. So definitely yes, that's the the question. It's also interesting to observe that you know in terms of the political situations. I mean, we can see intercommunality like in a state context, for instance, like at the court. And this has a very interesting trajectory uh, with, you know, with uh, there is a with the Greek Revolution. Uh, there is a decline. You know, you can we can see this at the at the at the archival material. You can see suddenly, you know, whereas you do do have before that you do have like mixed. Uh, you do have non-Muslims and you have uh, Greek Orthodox musicians in the court. There is a decline of that which has been restored in Tanzimat. So there is, it's quite interesting to see that, you know, there is mm -hmm. a kind of a, a change there. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, at the same time, while you have this change of intercommunality on a state context, which is quite obvious, the Greek musicians, due to political uh, reasons, uh, do not perform anymore in the, at the court, intercommunality moves in the city. So you can actually observe kind of uh, intercommunality in other uh, fields of music um, uh, activities, like, for instance, in private gatherings. Uh, so that's one way to also put what your question on spatial terms. And it's very interesting as we move towards the end of the 19th century. I mean, we didn't really uh, when we didn't go uh, further than the uh, 1870s. But it's interesting that you know the 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 the, the type of intercommunality changes. I mean, it's not only the communities res residing in Istanbul, but you have also a lot of mobility. For instance, musicians coming from the Arab provinces, and these are actually being uh, either collaborating or actually performing at the same spaces that sort of local communities were performing. So intercommunality ex expands beyond the uh, sort of the ethno-religious communities that you know that, that they've been residing in Istanbul for a while so that's another example of the shifting you know of intercommunality of the dynamic so certainly uh, and that's also the the aim of the project is to to look at the the way the political context sort of shapes all that I mean and uh, uh, we should be doing more work on that in the future absolutely so the if i can go to your first question about the type of data and material and everything well that's always a, a tricky thing with uh, you know attempts to make uh, like to to produce um, like a database and you know try to uh, we have to i mean it's it's obvious from the presentation we have quite diverse sources and that needs a certain sort of careful management uh, the, the, the data uh, are, uh, you know, are actually the nature of the data is a collective process, so different people work in different sources. And of course, different people brought experience they had already in research. So uh, that's how we, we get this combination of Ottoman with Greek uh, sources and then musical sources uh, coming together. Uh, there was a prehistory in terms of data sets. Uh, I, I had a, a, a previous research project on the on the Medjlisis of Istanbul, the, the, the private gathering. So we had material to build on it. Uh, but as you your question, I mean, if I get to understand your question well, we had to set certain limitations because it's the, the, the field is immense. The, the, the material that you can actually include is tremendous. I mean, if we if you start, uh, you know, taking um, um, a different uh, options, so we had to limit it and of course take certain decisions. So by no means what you have at the moment, the repository can be like a very representative of everything we try to do and that's the the one thing you know it's i think what what i we got also from this uh, process is it's you know it's it's the most i think difficult part is to actually design the the, the process of data production at the beginning because uh, it can really you know lead you to you know 
first in a, in a very chaotic situation in terms of management and then into very sort of um, misleading kind of uh, results. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, what I would, I mean, I, I would, having this in mind, uh, what you said, I mean, I, I would very much, you know, enjoy having time for the next, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the coming, you know, years to actually, uh, you know, calibrate more, if I can use this word, like the, 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 the representation of, of different sources and material. Uh, but it, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's at the core of the, of the work of the, of the team at the very beginning of the project. So I think we answered all your questions or did we? Yes, ask? great. And we have just in time, we have a question from the audience from Will Sumit. Okay. And um, it is, um, I'll just read it for, because I don't think the audience can see it. Uh, so hello and thank you. I was wondering, why do you think that print publishing of secular music collections in Byzantine notation started so much earlier than collections in other notation systems? I don't know of any print publications of secular music in Hambartum notations, and it seems other collections of secular music only started after the adoption of staff notation. Are there any social or economic circumstances that you think contributed to the earlier adoption of the printing press by Greek communities for music publication? Great question. <laughs> yes, it is by Will, Will Summits. Thank you, Will. Eleni, you want to say how? Shall I start and uh, you... Yes, let's, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, again, this is a very good question. Thank you, Will. Um, I think one uh, aspect that I can bring into this answer is uh, the new method, then maybe Panagiotis can uh, 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 provide some more aspects. So in terms of uh, the technology of uh, notation and print, uh, the room community has this uh, very particular history. So this is the time in the 1820s when uh, Chrysanthos and the other two teachers um, uh, uh, create the, the so-called new method, this uh, notation system, which is actually uh, invented in the tw uh, 1820s, but is the end product of a long process of evolution. Uh, and it is key in the implementation of a major musical reform in the field of Greek Orthodox ecclesiastical music. And it is this notation system which allows uh, print uh, typography. So clearly here there is a process, uh, uh, there is, a, 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 sorry, an agenda of um, uh, implementing uh, ecclesiastical music, but I think it is clear that with the secular music collections, something more than um, the implementation of a new uh, uh, church music notation system is, um, is carried out. Um, and what is also interesting uh, is that the patriarchal press, if I remember correctly, only um, prints uh, music uh, collections in the 1840s. So this is a bit late. Uh, earlier on, it is uh, Armenians and Jews who uh, take up the, carry out the publication of the Greek music collections. So this is an aspect which points a lot, a lot to the intercommunality. So uh, perhaps um, the subscribers uh, of the music collections uh, sort of uh, prescribe a very uh, room, uh, Greek Ottoman uh, milieu, but in terms of the typography and the publishers and this network, which uh, supports uh, the music publications is uh, clearly very intercommunal. And this is something that has not been studied uh, as far as I can tell, even in the history of Jewish print, in the in the Jewish uh, history of uh, print, this is very understated. So it's really worth um, further uh, research. Panos, would you like to add? Uh, well, more or less, more? I mean, that's what I was uh, planning to say. Well, I, I think there's also, a, well, obviously, I think the church is very important here. And consequently, the, uh, you know, the level of, competition between the different sets, I mean, the Greek and the, Army, the, and the communities, because at the same time, the Hamparsum um, project is being uh, also uh, at play, it's been uh, actually developing. Uh, so uh, one, I mean, as Eleni said, I mean, it's very important, you know, the, the kind of support 
well, the Habersun project also had the support by the Mechanist uh, and uh, other agents, but uh, obviously here, this one thing has to do with the with the patriarchate and the and the and the support in actually getting the system uh, disseminating it for the for the needs of the of the liturgical music. Uh, there is also, if I'm not mistaken, Eleni, a prehistory in the technology of uh, printing of the printing. Uh, 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 of printing the signs, so that's also another thing. So there is a kind of which is beyond uh, beyond the stuff, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's what I would you know as far. But I think it's a very uh, good question. Like you know, you have all these manuscript uh, uh, tradition of Hampers notations, and you don't get uh, you don't get uh, collections of secular music. Uh, so it's an open question. I, I imagine. Mary would also have some good uh, mm -hmm. thoughts about right. that. But, you know, the way the format doesn't allow uh, for more interaction. Could you explain what Hampartsum notation is for those of us that aren't? I've heard the word, but right, I don't okay. understand. Well, what the, it is, we yeah. kind of uh, implied it, referred it like a quickly. Hampartsum notation is a, 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 well, it's named after a certain person, uh, Hampartsum. Uh, and it's a, a, a reform version of uh, an, a, a, an older uh, notation that has notation from the Armenian church and it was developed kind of parallel according to recent research probably also in a competition in competitive manner with the Greek uh, uh, case and it actually uh, used mostly for the transcription of uh, the, the notation of secular repertoire, actually certainly more in, uh, in terms of amount, you know, in terms of uh, amount of um, repertoire compared to the, to the Greek uh, notation, uh, which is mostly, as Will also points, uh, preserved in manuscripts. So we have the manuscripts of that. Mm -hmm. So it's the, mm -hmm. say, the Armenian kind of counterpart of the Greek Nea Methodos, not exactly counterpart, but you know, kind of the parallel mm. notations. It's a, a, a pneumatic notation. And do we have? Because um, I'll just I have all these more questions. So, um, do we have? Is it that the intercommunality? So, in musical gatherings and and training and things, is it? Um, is it all like? How can I put it? Is it all equally intercommunal? I know court music. I know from Walter Feldman's book and from my, your work too that like court music obviously is this space where people from all these different communities are participating and kind of creating new forms. And it seems like the informal musical gatherings are intercommunal. Obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously, but the church and the mosque and the synagogue, I would guess that those are limited to particular communities or do we actually have cross communal presence in the religious spaces as well so is it is it all just indiscriminately intercommunal or is it is so we have certain spaces that are like mono communal <laughs> and okay. then other spaces that are okay. intercommunal Eleni, you, shall, shall I? Okay. <laughs> Well, yes. Uh, well, uh, but, but we shouldn't give the impression that you know, there's uh, intercommunality everywhere and in all different uh, settings. In terms of private gatherings, uh, there is a very you know strong uh, uh, tradition of you know preliminary sort of uh, uh, Ottoman Muslim musicians gathering in you know mostly in Fatih in various spaces, the Ottoman literati and uh, music aficionados. Mm -hmm. Within this kind of tradition, there are very few examples where we can see uh, non-Muslims being participating, um, mm. included this kind of examples. But it's not like it's not like the the norm certainly, but it kind of show, shows like a certain openness at the borders of this tradition. Mm. Uh, now, in terms of uh, lessons in churches, um, uh, what is interesting we have intercommunality between the different. Uh, Denomination. So we ha we have cases of uh, Armenians studying with um, uh, with, mm. uh, with Greek Orthodox and vice versa. So that's kind of mm -hmm. intercommunality within the Christian sort of uh, world. And mm -hmm. uh, then in terms of spaces where the traditional, I mean, the traditionally sort of uh, lib not liberal is not the right uh, word, but kind of very open in this kind of intercommunality. It, 
it was usually it's it's usually like the 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 the, 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 the Sufi orders and the the tariqats, particularly Mevlevis in mm. Istanbul, uh, where he already in the 18th century we do have uh, you know record documented presence of uh, you know Greek musicians, uh, uh, Jewish musicians, and there's a lot of um, uh, processes there uh, and feedbacks to the feedback to the communities. So mm-hmm. again, it's kind of uh, you know uh, uh, spatially organi- uh, um, distributing you know the, the phenomenon uh, in, in certain cases. Mm-hmm. Ah, Betuli. Yeah, question for Eleni from Honda Betuli Um Can you talk briefly about the social profiles of the subscribers? Who were these people, their professions, etc.? Uh, I can talk briefly. Unfortunately, I cannot talk uh, for long because, uh, as I said, um, this is um, in order to get like a clearer picture. Uh, I think that more research needs to be to be put in this. So what we have managed so far is to sort of catalog the names and. Uh, Sometimes there is some indication on professions, but this is not always the case. Actually, in most cases, there is no profession uh, given. We do have some indications about the price of the books. So in this publication, which is forthcoming, uh, one can see that, for example, for a chanter, who chanters form uh, quite a significant portion of the subscribers, not very big, but uh, they do have a, a quite consistent presence. So for a chanter of like um, um, a not very um, sort of uh, elite area and not very low area, uh, working class area, um, the, the, the price of the book is about one tenth, if I remember correctly, of their salary month, of their month salary. So this is quite expensive uh, for, for them. I'm not sure if I can say anything more, actually. Well, if I may. Mm-hmm. These are these are okay. Yes, these are clearly uh, people who are, uh, you know, sort of uh, literati. Um, uh, many of them are clergy. Um, Panos. No, that's what I want to add. That there is certainly there is a a group of clergy with. They they get they support anyway this kind of publication. I think what is interesting, I mean, in um, uh, this question is when we go and also what you actually uh, replied. I mean, taking the uh, the uh, the payrolls of of cantors and you know uh, comparing to the price of the book. This is a very interesting, I think, point. Is when you go to this specified kind of area where uh, more uh, more 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 uh, research needs to be done to 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 to, to identify possible sort of um, social slash social economic financial uh, uh, sort of status of uh, people. In certain cases, I think we do have some interesting uh, examples of um, layman. I mean, I mean, like probably you know, uh, not necessarily like the, the clergy or like uh, you know scribes or other sort of merchants and stuff, but we can see some working class. Uh, examples, but they come as an exemption. I mean, we get this from the, the title sometimes. Um, which, I mean, if I can make like this uh, thought now, if, if we think of the way that we have this kind of shift in 18th century in uh, the, the Muslim community, I mean, with the way we look at the uh, how we, we go from like a very strict sort of circle, we start having in Esad Defend, Esteskire, we start seeing Musicians coming like from uh, like a more sort of um, not working class uh, um, uh, background, but from um, a sort of um, manual workers kind of professions, uh, sort of appearing in the in the in the in the scene. So you know, it's I would definitely I mean assume that it's quite uh, str- uh, sort of more sort of diversely stratified, if that's the correct word. What is also striking, if I may add, is that um, 
if one takes these catalogs and then looks at you know the um, high profile people active in the music field which are found in the biographies in the um, biographical books uh, like the, the main sources we have for biographies of musicians and chanters of the time we don't see them there uh, and then there, there are some further problems about uh, that have to do with identifying because usually there is this, the only one name, no, there is no uh, surname, epitheto, uh, especially for the earlier collections. Uh, we suspect, and this is also from book historians, we suspect that sometimes their data is given uh, in different ways. So sometimes there is a professional occupation, sometimes it is not. Sometimes their place of origin is there, sometimes not. So it's difficult to identify to what extent the same name uh, applies to the same person. So there is a number of problems that need uh, to be studied further in order to get a clear picture. I'm sure, again, Mary Harrell has um, uh, also some things to say about this. <laughs> Thank you. Again, while we wait for a further question, I have another one about the geographies aspect of this. And that is, I noticed in the maps that Eleni put up, uh, she said, at least as far as the musical collection subscribers goes, um, that the, the, the span of geographical, uh, uh, the span of where the subscribers are coming from increases through time. And again, I'm sorry to be preoccupied with politics, but do you find any critical mass growing in Athens? Like, is there any discernible pattern of a community in Athens participating in a related musical culture that is obviously less intercommunal because Athens <laughs> is less intercommunal? Um, or is it, you know, like, it seemed like it was sort of the the Romi areas. It was like the coast, so like the Bulgarian coast of the Black Sea into the Balkans. Um, so it was expanding, but it was expanding along kind of Ottoman networks of Christians, maybe? Is that a safe uh, hypothesis? Or do you find any pattern with Athens? Yeah, uh, it would seem so, actually. I think uh, also I can only hypothesize here, but Athens does not figure at all, not even one entry <laughs> for these four collections, at least. Um, hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. It, it, um, yeah, my first assumption would be that you know, Athens and uh, states and area states, uh, cities and areas which are under the Greek state for a longer period, already from the early 19th century, are sort of uh, on a different, um, you know, book project, uh, um, hmm. which has to do with uh, European cities, which has to do with publications from uh, hmm. ancient Greek literature. You know, there is a more uh, sort of nationalist in the Greek state sense. A sort of book project taking place there. And it seems that uh, mm -hmm. these are two different uh, sort of um, processes in parallel that do not seem mm -hmm. to communicate a lot. But again, I think more uh, research is needed in order to be sure about this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if I can add something, I mean, what is quite interesting, I was thinking now with Christine's question is that, yes, you're right. I mean, you cannot see like uh, subscribers there, but. Um, there is a certain part of the repertoire of these books, not, let's say, the more sort of heavy classical, but like more sort of popular songs that, mm -hmm. you know, they do appear in the field of entertainment, as it happens also in Istanbul. And at the end of um, 19th century in Athens, we do have this kind of thriving nightclub uh, scene, isn't it, Eleni? And with troops mm -hmm. traveling, troop of musicians mm -hmm. traveling, so it's quite interesting. We don't get we don't get like the the actual the books and actually the actual literati probably being interested in the, this kind of publications. But at the same time, uh, there is part of this music. I wouldn't say all of all of this all the all the whole sort of uh, stylistic. I mean, uh, corpus that is present in Athens in a different uh, manner through sort of uh, uh, traveling troops of musicians playing in the. Uh, Cafe Amans, etc. Mm. And also, there's another interesting, uh, I mean, talking about uh, the connection between uh, Greece and the Ottoman Empire, 
we have uh, there's an interesting part of the documents uh, about well when we come into the, the the issue of uh, censorship and uh, and uh, not censorship and um, uh, regulation there are cases of books imported from Athens music books medjmoas mm. imported mm. from Athens uh, that uh, actually they sometimes have been considered uh, suspicious and have been. Uh, uh, they've been um, uh, regulated, they've been banned or something like that. So we have mm. this... After 1876, like in the Hamidian period, you mean? That, or would yes. they be banned yes, even yes, before? Exactly. So we have, you know, there are books that, you know, they have the suspicious kind of content, or probably mm. less folk so, uh, songs that, you know, uh, of, uh, of uh, relevant content. Ah, uh, interesting. Hmm. Great. Should I keep going? Not, uh, <laughs> just one uh, more comment, Christine, if I may. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, this is also noted in the in the in, in the bibliography that also the ecumenical patriarchate has, you know, it has its own censorship mechanism. So it's not that <laughs> you know, uh, the Ottoman lands are, uh, you know, free of uh, ideological. Uh, mm. So it it is there to safe keep, uh, you know, that. Uh, ideologies that are close and uh, friendly towards the patriarchate will will only be uh, uh, expressed in books. Right. That's a great point. Great. Well, one closing question, I guess, is what you see as the next steps. I know that you've built this great kind of foundation repository and you can add information to it, which is one of the virtues of this. Do you see, I know that other people who've completed digital projects, one of the problems they're trying to address now is how to keep that in the domain, in sort of the scholarly domain in order for people to interact with it and in order maybe to link up with other significant digital projects to expand the kind of um, reach and the, um, you know, the effects that, that this can have. And so I wondered, are there other, um, are there other digital projects that is, oh, it's not too late. And then, so that is my closing question. And then uh, Will has one last question that you can also uh, work into your comments. Uh, just curious, in the last quarter of the 19th century and early part of the 20th century, there were significant contributions in publishing and music performance by Ottomanized Arab musicians. Have you noticed any references to the Arab community in intercommunal musical relations in the earlier part of the 19th century? Another great question. Thank you, Will. Yes, yes. Thank you, Will. Uh, well, that's that's true. I mean, the 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 reference to well, we have um, um, uh, so we have Arab musicians being brought to the court in the mid nineteenth century, which is a different, of course, uh, case. And we know that it's been documented by uh, the Sultan traveling to to Egypt and other musicians that there. They've been um, involved in the pay in the payrolls and uh, in the orchestras. In terms of uh, musicians in the entertainment business, Ottomanized Arabs, as you mentioned them, the, the all like, all references I have come across, they are actually towards the end of the nineteenth century and not uh, early in the nineteenth century. So that's for Will. Well, for your question, Christina, I don't know, Eleni, you want to or. Uh, well, no, go, go ahead. Well, I just, well, obviously, I mean, um, yes, the digital part is certainly can be important and hunting. We saw some ways, I mean, I some ways that we can actually, uh, you know, uh, explore this medium, but it's not, you know, it's, it's a, it's a repository. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think uh, I, I would see, I mean, it's important to keep it up. Uh, it's important to, um, uh, to to have sort of uh, new sort of data sets being imported. Uh, the other thing is certainly, as you said, uh, interconnectivity with other projects uh, similar because I mean that's that's the kind of I think the, the, the spirit in the digital humanities. I mean, so and actually we've already I mean we we are in a very uh, fruitful and um, uh, interesting discussion with um, uh, Raf Yeager of the CMO project and the team in Münster and we've been exchanging, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, ideas. Uh, 
recently, I mean, there's a, a new project now in uh, the University of Cambridge, if I'm not mistaken, by uh, Peter McMurray, which again, um, uh, it's again about mapping. So, you know, we, you know, we kind of, uh, uh, we are in uh, open contact. So it will be important if you can actually, these projects, different aspects kind of uh, get together and uh, create more things. Well, we have Istanbul, of course, uh, which is another digital project in uh, in Berkeley, where Intermusic is. Uh, I mean, the, the laboratory and uh, Intermusic sort of uh, uh, co collaborate is a collaborator of this project. It's about the queer communities. So that's one aspect, as you said. Uh, the other thing is more sort of uh, critical and focused uh, studies of the traditional <laughs> type, uh, the, the things, the questions that came up. So I think it's uh, uh, it, it's good to have all this material sort of available, but I think I, the, the future would be like to, to, to have sort of more intensive kind of um, research and uh, individual uh, sort of studies and all these questions that we've been discussing and all these questions that we didn't manage to sort of thoroughly answer. Uh, and uh, that, that will be for me, I, I, you know, like kind of ideal of the future of the project, of the project and of the, the outcome of it. If I may just add Thanks. one, uh, one, mm -hmm. one aspect in this, um, what I at least what I have realized is the importance of uh, big teams. If you are, you know, to pose such grand questions, then it's really important there that there is a big team which is working because you have to deal with many sources with a lot of data. And uh, it really helps to go forward in terms of the picture mm -hmm. you can get. Yes, collaboration. That's a great note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> the importance and the virtues of collaboration. It's a new message for many in academia. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much. I think at this time I'll um, give the floor back to Udam and um, thank you all. We have a few thank yous in the notes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, all of you, for this wonderful talk. Also, dear listeners, thank you for your questions. Uh, Animate Library Talks will continue in December. We will share the details on following days. Uh, good, good evening to all. Bye. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. Thanks.